What is up, everybody? Hey, been gone for four or five days here. Maybe you missed me. Probably didn't. You're probably like, oh, good. Chris is doing all the videos. And I get it. I totally get it. But hey, with that being said, back, had a little family vacation here in the middle of July. It was nice just to get away for a second. Um, thank you to Chris for taking all the videos while I was gone. Uh, but you see the title. Are the Detroit Lions in danger of losing a couple of rookies before the season even starts? Based on an article here, Pride of Detroit. Multiple Detroit Lions rookies taken in the UFL draft. All right. So as you may know, the United Football League combination of two different leagues, uh, you know, XFL and whatever the other one was, and USFL, and uh, they created the UFL. They have 80 players selected uh, by their eight teams over 10 rounds. So each player gets eight players. So I guess that's basically how it works. Amongst these players selected were two undrafted free agent rookies currently on the Lions rocker roster. Those were wide receiver Isaiah Williams and edge rusher Isaac Ukwu. So the question is, do we care if either of these players are gone? But also, do we have a fear that they will be gone? And the answer is no, the money is in the NFL. Any player that would make an NFL team will play in the NFL. It's like 10 times the money. It's not even close. So even if one of these players made the team, even if they were a practice squad player, they would absolutely stay on the team and we wouldn't have any fear of losing them. This isn't like they got drafted and they have to choose. Do we go play in the UFL or do we play in the NFL? I mean, technically, yeah, they choose, but the choice is, is already made for them. They try and make the NFL team first. So Ukwu was selected by the local Michigan Panthers while Williams was drafted by the defending champion Birmingham Stallions. In other words, the smart team drafted um, Williams. Now, the Panthers had a good year this year as well, but we're not going to get into that. What I want to talk about in this video is, are either of these players actually, do they have a shot at making the team? And I have a crazy comparison for one of them that you're going to say, Homer, you're going to say all these kind of things. Um, it just stuck out to me. It did, and it's with Isaiah Williams. So we're going to get into that in a second. But before I talk about Isaiah Williams and why I think he actually does have a shot to make this team as a wide receiver, let's first talk about Isaac Ukwu because I think a lot of players or people don't know who this guy is. Um, okay, so he played at Ole Miss. That's great. At a decent RAS relative athletic score, he's not a bad player. Where he's really good is his explosion, which means there's a lot of power there. Um, which if having the correct coaching can be taught into good playing. This is similar to like James Houston, if I'm going to be honest with you, with what he can do. Um, and he's sitting here at 6'2", 260. Um, arms aren't short uh, at 33 inches. So like he has a lot of the things there. The reason I'm saying he's similar to James Houston is because he's one of those guys that actually started his career at James Madison. He was very, very good at James Madison. And twenty, uh, his first two years there were really cut short by injuries. And then in 2021 and 2022, he had back-to-back -back seasons with eight and seven and a half sacks. He really just busted out on the scene. Um, in 2021, he had 15 tackles for loss, eight sacks. In 2022, 10 and a half tackles for loss, seven and a half sacks um, when people really started to key in on him. Then he was able to take that and do moderate production at Ole Miss out of the SEC. Now, do I think he's going to make the team? Well, the problem is if you look at our depth chart on ESPN, he doesn't even make the list. All right, So it's one of those things where you have to understand like he really does have his work going against him. So if you want to watch Isaac Ukwu, and I could be wrong on this, uh, you're going to be watching him play for the Michigan Panthers uh, come later on after the NFL season is over. Now, Isaiah Williams is a different cat. At first, when you look at certain things, you could look at his RAS. It doesn't blow you away in any way, shape, or form. He's not tall. He's not, uh, he's not heavy. He's not fast. All right, he does have good explosion. Uh, but nothing blows you away about his RAS. And then you put the film in. And you see that he is a guy that worked almost solely out of the slot. 
All right, so he works almost solely out of the slot, um, and he does some crazy things out of the spl- out of the slot. He seems to be able to run away from people in his routes. He doesn't continue to run away from them after he catches the ball, um, but across the middle of the field. Uh, when other people are around, he seems to be quicker than fast. He just gets to top gear really quick. His top gear isn't maybe as high as others, but he gets there really, really fast. Um, his grade versus man coverage is good. His grade versus zone coverage is good. Uh, his contested catch rate isn't great, and his drop rate's middle of the road. But when I watch the film, I can't help but be reminded of the film I watched of Amon Ra St. Brown at USC. Now, we know what makes Amon Ra St. Brown so good is not the film that you watch on him. It's who he is. It's his work ethic. It's his workout regimen. It's just the fact that he loves football. I don't know about Isaiah Williams in that category. I also know that St. Brown is three inches taller and 20 pounds heavier. So there's that. But when you look at this guy, last year, in fact, every year, he played primarily out of the snaps. In 2022, out of 366 snaps, 305 out of the slot. Um, In 2023, out of 456 snaps, 371 out of the slot. And he was able last year to turn that into over 1,000 yards on 127 targets at Illinois. I understand the Big Ten is a completely different ball game than um, the NFL. I get it, okay? But I also know he had some of his best games against the best teams. He had a good game against Kansas, Penn State. Um, He had really good games toward the back end of the year against Maryland, against Minnesota, against Indiana, against Iowa. All right, they didn't play a schedule against the powerhouses. The only team that they have on this schedule that was a powerhouse was Penn State. That's it. And if you want to call Iowa one, that's fine. But I I wouldn't. But they do have a phenomenal defense, and he had a great game against them. He is a missed tackle forcing machine. He was tied for 11th in the country with missed tackles forced by a wide receiver. There's a lot of things to like about him. So as training camp is ramping up here in six days, right, and then we are hearing news and we're going to be able to watch preseason games. Let's just see, does he have the ability to get wide open? He had slot catches. He had screen catches. He had deep catches. He had everything, all right? Yards after the catch. This guy averaged 12.9 yards per reception, 6.7. Over half of his yards came after he caught the ball. All right, and he still did okay getting some deep balls as well. So I saw some really good contested catches um, going deep. So just some things to think about. No, we're not in, in danger of losing them. And number two, wanted to clear that because I know people might be seeing that, hey, a couple of Lions got drafted. What does this mean? We don't always know those things. That's what we like to do on this channel. So there you have it. And, um, hey, one of them might actually stick. And if they don't, You can watch him play for the Stallions and for the Panthers. All right, thanks for watching. Good to be back. See you on the next one.